Good afternoon, Christine Regan Lake here. Hope all is well. Um, <clears throat> today, I wanted to talk to you about um, beliefs around money. And um, I think uh, it's always interesting when you talk to people about money and you kind of, you know, and, and you can um, learn a lot about them and their beliefs uh, by the way they communicate, the things that they say, their posturing and position on things with regard to money. Um, and a lot of people don't realize that they have victim mentality around money. Um, uh, and, you know, it's really sabotaging their success. And, you know, but a lot of it is so unconscious, they don't, they don't get it, they don't understand it. And um, so it's said that only 11% of the people will grow up and have a different money mindset than their parents. So you basically inherit inherit your parents' belief systems around money. Now, what is also subconsciously absorbed is um, the belief that like somehow if you are more successful than your parents, more successful than your father or your mother, that somehow you are um, dishonoring them. And this comes up a lot when I do um, sessions with people, um, energy sessions on doing release work, about the fact that, you know, well, um, you know, I, they've never made more than their dad or their mom, and they, it, you know, when, when you're kind of asking them about it and, and pressing them about it, it actually comes out that they feel like it would be, it would be inappropriate for them to, to make more money and be more successful than their parents because that would somehow bring shame to their parents, which is of course absurd and doesn't serve you. But so it's so, it's so important. I, you know, I, I, there, I have a money test that I give for my clients when they want to learn about money. And you know, it's always fascinating when they take it. And I actually had one client who, um, said she wanted to make a shift around money. And so I sent her the test, we were gonna do the session, and um, and then she never got back to me, and she did not schedule the session. And uh, it was really interesting, and it took 10 months for her to take this test. And so I come home one night after having dinner, and she, um, I get the email from her with the results of the test, and she said, um, I had to do a shot of vodka and then I took the test. So it took her 10 months to face her fears. She knew she had, she knew she was absolutely certain that she had like really screwed up beliefs around money. And so it took her 10 months to be able to face her fear. And then when she was ready to take the test, she had to do a shot of vodka to take it. Cause it like, she needed like this extra bit of courage. Cause she, you know, it was just kind of like, this is gonna be ugly and I'm not gonna like what I learn and it's, you know, whatever, but she finally took it. And you know, that's the thing, you know, it doesn't matter, um, you know, about growth and self-development and stuff like that. Like it, it, you know, the reality is you can't fix anything you refuse to look at and you can't fix anything that you don't know is broken, right? So if you have subconscious beliefs around money that are self-destructive, that are limiting, that are lack-based, then that's gonna be a problem. And the thing is though, because you've never, you know, you're kind of just operating in the passenger seat, not really having a full understanding of what your beliefs around money are, you're really disempowered. So that's what I find so amazing about this test is that it so crystallizes for you where your invisible blocks are. Once we develop, once we find those invisible blocks and we bring them into the light and we see what they are, then we can do the energy work to release the anchors that were that are in your body that are in your nervous system around money career and finances so that it can be we can remove those anchors and then you can be able to shift into a higher um a higher gear or like raise the inner thermostat of your earning potential things like that but you cannot fix what you don't know you know if if you have these invisible blocks at the subconscious level these beliefs that are limiting that are you know that are just keeping you at and, and you could be doing well, right? You, you just might be, want to be doing more, more prosperous. You, you go to that next level. 
Jack Canfield of Chicken Soup for the Soul said it took him three years to be comfortable having like several million dollars in his in his uh, several million dollars a year in his life every year. Like it, he didn't grow up with that kind of money, so it was very uncomfortable for him. And it took him a few years, and then and then if he wants to go to the next level, so if his inner thermostat now says, well, I'm worth like three million dollars a year or five million dollars a year. If he wants to go to like $10 million a year or $20 million a year, again, it's about retooling, retweaking, and going inside and raising that inner thermostat to say, yeah, I'm worthy of $10 million a year. I'm capable of managing $10 million a year. I have the intelligence, the discipline, um, the wherewithal to be able to healthfully manage, you know, having $10 million a year coming into my, into my reality. So that's the beautiful thing, you know, I always go back to clarity is power. And the more clarity we have about all of our subconscious beliefs, not just around money, but also around like, like love and health and, you know, politics, whatever, um, our subconscious mind is so powerful and it's so, it's so critical for you to get a handle on what it's thinking and what it's believing because, it runs the show. Whether we like it or not, our subconscious mind is responsible for like 95% of everything we do. So if you really want to, you know, take command of your life, if you really want to step into a level of self-mastery, then you absolutely have to understand what your subconscious beliefs are. So I hope you found value and I look forward to speaking with you. Thanks. Take care. Bye.